Hi everyone, my name is Jacob, and uh, if you're watching this, thanks for taking the time. Um, just, uh, I thought I put together some videos just talking about how to learn the Samoan language. And if you're looking at me, you probably realize I'm, I'm obviously not Samoan, um, but I do speak it. I uh, lived in Samoa for two years. I was working there as a missionary, and I came from not knowing any Samoan to learning Samoan by the time I left. Um, and then I went to go on to teach it uh, for three years for other missionaries going out to serve. Um, it's just, you know, something, it was a job I really, really loved. Um, it's it's a really fascinating language and culture, so I just really liked it. I hope that um, there are people out there like yourselves that are interested in learning as well. So that's why I put these um, videos together. I'll be hopefully producing more as time goes on. But definitely let me know if you're interested in this topic or if these are helpful to you or if there's other comments you have by hitting the like button or subscribe or just leaving comments below. Um, you know, again, this is something I'm really interested in. So I do want to make sure I'm responsive to what's actually helpful for people out there. Um, you know, whether it's you want to go visit Samoa or you have Samoan speaking friends or family, or if you're of, you know, Samoan descent, but, but don't speak Samoan, but have family members that do, uh, hopefully this is helpful. Um, so without further ado, maybe just before starting that, my entire intention is to Go over some of the basics in terms of Samoan pronunciation, Samoan grammar, um, and really hopefully give the building blocks to you to actually just plug in your own words so you can start actually communicating with those friends and family or members of yours, or again, to kind of, if you go and visit there, it's a beautiful country. Uh, if you go and visit there, you know, have some tools with you to be able to actually converse with um, some of the people you meet, um, you know, a little bit, you know, better than you would have otherwise. Um, so without further ado, um, this first video, I thought we'd kind of just really cover the basics. So just talking about the Samoan alphabet, um, some of the different phonetic markers that we'll see in, th in spoken Samoan, um, some of the pronunciation variances with English. Um, I think it's important to talk a little bit about vowel combinations in Samoan. Um, vowels are used very heavily. Um, you, you can't even have two consonants really next to one another in a word. Every word ends in a vowel, so vowels are really important. And the way that they get combined in Samoan is, um, I think, a little bit more uh, unique than what we might see in English. Um, and then touching a little bit on colloquial Samoan versus formal Samoan, um, depending on your background and your exposure to language before, um, uh, formal Samoan might sound a lot different than what you've been accustomed to hearing. So I wanted to make sure that we touched on that. Um, so first and foremost, the, the Samoan alphabet. Uh, you'll notice that instead of 26 letters, we really have 17. Um, and there's actually three of those that are really only used for imported words. So they weren't necessarily there in sort of the, the original Samoan language, but they've since been adopted to basically um, accommodate some imported words from, say, English or, or other uh, languages. Um, so again, these slides here, I'm always going to post a link to them so you can download them before you even watch the video. You can kind of take notes if you if you feel like it going along. So they'll be definitely there for you guys to download. What I'll plan to do in these videos is just kind of demonstrate um, the pronunciation or kind of going back and forth and give some explanation. But hopefully these are kind of tools that you guys can reference back to if it's helpful. Um, but just kind of going through the uh, pronunciation of the letters. Um, it'll demonstrate sort of how the vowel sound it also, is also the consonant. So um, I'll just kind of go down the list. A, E, I, O, U, Fa, Na, La, Mo, Nu, B, Sa, T, V, He, Ka, Ro. So in the next couple of slides, I'll kind of go over really how those differentiate, but just real quickly, um, again, the vowels are important and their Latin vowel pronunciation. So if you've spoken Spanish before, are kind of familiar with how the vowel sounded in that language, it's the same here. They don't change at all. So again, we'll kind of look at the next uh, slide. Before we get to there, though, a couple of phonetic markers that you'll see all the time in Psalm 1 are the glottal stop and the macron. So the glottal stop almost is like its own, almost like its own letter. Um, and really what it represents is like, it's like a hard stop right in front of a vowel. So I've got a couple examples there. And so hopefully you can hear it when I demo it. But the first one being fa sa mo. So you hear that fa, you really just, you, you stop basically saying anything. Um, again, it's usually between two vowels or right in front of a vowel. 
So fa'asa mo. Um, the next example there is o oh, o. Oh. Um, so it's really important that you you really stop and and do a hard start again. Um, the next one there is oi. So that's an example of where um, it doesn't necessarily separate two vowels, but it comes right in front of, a, of another one. So oi oi. So you can kind of hear it's a harder punch almost uh, when you say it. Um, the next one is a macron, and really this is a, a phonetic marker that, that um, modifies vowel sounds, and it's really the only modification to vowel sounds in Psalm 1, the only true modification, and all it does is it elongates the sound that you make with that vowel. So if you ever see that macron over a vowel, it just means you hold out that sound a little bit longer. So again, a, e, i, o, u, but if you have a, a macron over it, it's just a, e, E, O, U. So in the, uh, the examples I have there, the word malo, that's worth a macron over both the A and the O, as opposed to, for example, if you didn't have those macrons there, it would sound like malo. Um, or if you just had a macron over the O, it would be malo. And in fact, the word malo is, is a word in Psalm 1, and it's very different than the word malo. So it really does have a meaning. It's not just a, oh, this sounds you know, cool or something. It's actually important in uh, differentiating the meaning of different words. Um, and then the other example there is oa mai oi. So here we actually have a glottal stop and we have a macron, but again, that, that uh, we elongate that a sound because of the macron. Oa mai oi. So moving on, I thought I'd highlight some of the the differences in the pronunciation with English. And again, some of these might sound subtle. Um, but they're worth the investment because if you don't get, if you don't put some time in learning these up front, um, it'll always, like your accent will, will always be pretty strong, um, at least in my opinion. Um, so I guess the things I'd highlight first, again, vowels being really important, um, their, their Latin pronunciation, and they never change. Like English, the letter A can be pronounced at least three different ways. You know, it can be uh, it can be a, uh, can be a, it can be, you know, ah uh, as well. Um, in Samoan, it is always ah, uh, no matter what. It, the the way that that vowel pronounced, no matter where it falls in the word, where it falls in the sentence, it was always the exact same sound. Um, the consonants in Samoan, there's a lot that are just like English, and that's that makes it easy. Um, but there's a few differences that I want to highlight. So in particular, the consonants t. P and K. In English, we pronounce this, we, we, we aspirate these consonants. And what that means is there's a puff of air that comes out of your mouth when you say these consonants in English. And you can actually feel that puff of air when you put your hand in front of your mouth. So if you were to say, um, like for example, kite, you actually feel like that puff of air right in the beginning when you say kite. Um, and, and same thing with like popcorn, like you hear it at the P in popcorn. And you also hear it in the corn part. You feel that puff of air come out. In Psalm 1, these are not aspirated. And so you, it's, it's almost like in English, you almost have like an H coming out of there, like, like that. In Psalm 1, there is none of that. So I'll kind of go over examples later. But for example, um, like the word tautala in Psalm 1, it means to, to speak. And if you put your hand in front of your mouth and you say tautala, you don't feel that puff of air. If I was to say that with like a more... English pronunciation of those T's, it'd be like tautala. It's like, I'm overemphasizing it, but it is different. And you can you can hear it, it really helps differentiate a native speaker versus a non-native speaker. Um, so it's just something to keep mindful of. I don't want anyone to be hung up on that forever. Um, but if you're kind of looking to to really invest in this, I would, I would just think about that difference because it really does stick out and it's not necessarily immediately obvious. Um, the last one I'll talk about here is super obvious. The G in Psalm 1 is not pronounced like an English G. It's much more pronounced like an NG. So it's like in song. So for example, the word for language in Psalm 1 is ngangana, and those are both Gs. You can kind of hear the ngangana. So it's that NG. It can be a little tricky to get a hold of at first, but I, I think you guys won't have problems picking it up if you just think of it as an NG. In fact, in, in Tongan, um, they have the exact same consonant, but when they've um, adopted an alphabet to their language, they actually just wrote this as an NG. NG is a single consonant in, in Tongan. Um, so it's just kind of interesting how that works. 
Um, I want to talk a little bit about the pronunciation of words. The emphasis on Psalm 1 words, unless otherwise marked with like a macron or something like that, um, it's really on the second to last syllable. So kind of what I mean is like for these two words that I've got here in the example, mala malama, you can kind of hear on that second to last A, it's like mala malama. Um, same thing with tangata, it's the, the emphasis is on that, that second A, tangata, again, tangata. Um, so hopefully that makes sense, but you'll see that all the time when, when I'm, you know, demonstrating something, you'll hear me say it. Uh, it's just something to keep, you know, an eye out for. Um, the other thing I thought I'd touch on, because we are going to be doing a lot of different questions and things like that, is the intonation on questions. In English, typically when you're asking a question, your intonation goes up, like it's, uh, did you go to school today? And you kind of, like if I was to draw that out, I'd be like, did you go to school today? And you've got that upward intonation at the end. Um, it's just a very typical way we ask questions in English. In Psalm 1, um, it's actually almost the exact opposite. In reality, we actually go down at the very end of our question um, to make it clear that we're asking a question. So for example, um, what I have there is, oh, I doing law. And that, that's really how you ask, um, what's your name in Psalm 1? But you can hear that intonation at the very end of where I kind of drop off. It's, oh, I doing law. Um, or the next one I have is, that's where are you going in Psalm 1. Um, so again, it's, and just at the very end, we kind of drop off. So practice when, we, when, we, when you do questions or when you see questions written, try and, and adopt that, that intonation. Because again, just like in English, it would be really confusing if you didn't use the correct intonation, it'll be confusing in Psalm 1 as well. So it'll just kind of go a long way in helping you know, your friends or family that you practice with or the people that you might meet, it'll just kind of help it be a lot more understandable. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about vowel combinations. Um, I think a fancier word for, for vowel combinations is just diphthong. Um, and really, like I said, vowels are really, really important in Psalm 1. Um, not that they're not important in other languages, but we combine vowels in Psalm 1 and it might sound like a completely different sound, but in reality, if you see, like for example, in this first example, if you see an A and an E written together, you know that you that those vowels, the, the sounds those vowels make, they don't change no matter where they are in the sentence, where they are in the word. So you're going to be saying an A ah sound and you're going to be saying an A sound because you see both a letter A and a letter E. Um, but it can be kind of subtle. So for example, um, I'll just I'll kind of just demonstrate how to pronounce these as we go along, and then maybe I'll drill into a couple of them. But that first one with that letter A and the letter E, it means but in Psalm 1, like as a conjunction, um, and that's pronounced I, I. So you can see, if you slow it down enough, it, it should be pretty easy for you to do. But when it's said really closely, it can kind of, maybe it can uh, kind of slip your attention. So this one's almost like eyeball. That, that's kind of how it is. I. The second one sounds really similar, but totally different word. It means to eat. Um, and that's the letter A and the letter I. Um, and so that's pronounced I. I. And you'll notice that I'm saying an A ah, and I'm saying an E sound. I'm just saying them close together. So I. Um, third one down, I'll. Again, I'm saying all the same vowels, but I'm just saying them close together. This happens to mean it's the word for must or cloud in Psalm 1. Um, so, ow. Awa is another one. Um, if, if, you, if there are any of you out there that grew up in a Psalm 1 uh, speaking family, um, you probably heard this a lot. It just means don't. Like, that's something I tell myself all the time, so I'm sure everyone else heard it too. Uh, awa. Um, Last one in that column is lo. Um, again, that diphthong is you start with an o sound and you end with u. So o, lo, lo. And we'll learn more about what that actually means, but I just really wanted to demonstrate how these represent or how these present. Um, going over to the other column just to kind of demonstrate, we had the word foie moi. Foie moi means egg. Um, but you can see that, you know, we, we have that vowel combination in the first word, foie. So we start with a U and then go to an A, wa, wa. So if you slow it down enough, it's the same sounds that the U and the A always make, U and A. But when you combine it, it almost sounds like a, 
like a W A if we translate that to English, foi, and then moi again. If you slow it down enough, moi, it's uh, it's the same sound. It's just set closer together. Um, next one down in that column would be wo. So you, again, you start with a u and you end with an o, and that's the sound word for friend. Wo, wo. In English, we might have written that with a w o. Um, in Psalm 1, there is no W, so we use the vowels that we've got. Um, next one down on that list is yoi. This is the Psalm 1 word for yes. But again, it's all vowels. And if you slow it down enough, yoi, it's the same sound that those vowels always make. Yoi. And you just kind of flow it together, and that's how it's pronounced. Yoi. Uh, next one down is it's yesu. It's just a good example of um, a diphthong. This happens to be the, the Psalm 1 word for Jesus. My background is a missionary, so I had to put that in there. Um, and the last on that list is yate. Um, this is a difficult word to explain, so it's not very important, but it's just, you know, I just wanted to show examples of how different vowels are combined in ways that may not have been intuitive, and, you know, to the native English speaker. Um, I wanted to touch also in this lesson about the difference between formal and colloquial sound one. And all that means, colloquial is kind of like the way that you might speak to your friends, your family, just on, your, on the street in sort of everyday situations. Whereas formal might be, um, you know, if you're a broadcast, a news broadcaster on television, or if you're addressing sort of a public audience, um, or maybe, you know, in church situations, things like that. Um, you would you'd be speaking more formally. So formal Samoan, um, it's, sometimes it's called the T language. Um, and like I mentioned before, uh, K's, H's, and R's were really brought in um, as um, in, for imported words. But, but if, if you grew up in a Samoan, like in a home that, you know, your parents spoke Samoan or, or somebody else spoke Samoan, you probably heard a lot of people speaking a lot of K's, and those definitely were not all imported words. In spoken Samoan, all the T's that you see written turn into K's. So like an example of this, the Samoan word for to speak is tautala. Um, but you know, if you're just talking with your family, you'll probably never hear anybody say tautala. You're probably gonna hear them say kaukala. All those T's turn into K's, and if you're an English speaker trying to learn Samoan, oftentimes, this sounds like a completely different language than, than maybe what you've been reading or what you've been, you know, being taught or whatever. Um, but it's very, very common. Um, I would say that if you're just learning, um, the, the best thing probably to do is just to, to speak the T language. It's technically more respectful if you're um, a foreigner like me. Like so in, in Samoan, they would call me a Palani because I'm sort of of a European descent. Um, then you know it's actually more respectful for for me probably to be speaking the the T language anyway, but I can totally appreciate that. Hey, if all of your family and friends speak the K language, I would probably be trying to speak the K language too. Um, eventually, I think it's you know you definitely want to get to the point where you can switch back and forth and just you know be fine. So if you are speaking more formally to someone, you can be using your T's, and when you're just talking with your buddy, you can be using your K's. That's definitely what you want to aspire to. If it's challenging for you to kind of code switch like that, then I would just stick with T's until you feel pretty comfortable and then go to K's. But just so you know, you're not learning a different language. Um, it's just a difference between formal and colloquial. Again, if you guys have comments or questions about this, I'm happy to kind of come back and dial in more a little bit, but at least wanted to give you an introduction to it. Um, you'll see the same thing with um, R's and G's as well. So for example, R's, those, those are for imported words, but, and so in formal or written Samoan, um, they'll be there. So rapiti is the Samoan word for rabbit. Um, I couldn't think of a better word that used R's. Um, but in, you know, in spoken Samoan um, or like, you know, colloquial Samoan, you're never gonna hear anyone say rapiti. At best, you'd hear someone say lapiki. And to be honest, I didn't talk to a lot of people that were talking to me about rabbits. Um, but this just happened to be a good example. So rapiki instead of rapiti. Um, nanana, for example, that's the Samoan word for language. That's how it's traditionally written. That's, you know, if you're speaking sometimes to a little kid who's, you know, just, you know, in grammar school kind of thing, you might switch your G's to N's because they're a little bit easier to pronounce. 
And so you might actually say something like na 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 to them. And then on the flip side, um, N's can turn to G's in colloquial. So it could be in formal written sign one um, that it's you know written as an N. But if you're just talking to your friends, you might change that N to a G. So for example, the Samoan word for this is lenei, and it's that's with an N, lenei. But if you're just talking to a friend, you might call it lenei. Um, so it sounds subtle, but like you'll hear it all the time. Um, lastly, what I've done is I, I just put together some random vocab. Some of this was probably, well, most of this is probably not helpful to you, but I figured throughout these lessons, I'll try and throw out some vocab in there just to kind of um, go along with the exercises that we'll be demonstrating. Um, but probably the better thing to do is think about, hey, what are the things that I actually want to talk about? And then we'll begin to build the sentence structure so you can just plug in those words to wherever you want to go. Um, and I'll try and link down to some resources to like a someone English dictionary. I'll try and find the one that I really like on Amazon, but if not, I'll, I'll find something else. Um, uh, and also maybe some, I know there's some uh, web resources that kind of have some uh, vocab list available. And then Google Translate actually has some one now. So you can always kind of type in sort of words that you want. And it's not always it's not always perfect, but it's not terrible in terms of actually giving you a translation. So, I mean, I think those are the right resources. Again, we'll build the, the grammar and the, and, the, and the sentence structure, that kind of thing. So you can uh, learn to speak it, but you can swap and plug in your own words. Um, but I'll go, go through and just demonstrate these real quickly um, so you can kind of hear them pronounced. And again, if I go too fast, you guys can rewind it or whatever. Um, but just kind of going down the first column, fa'asa mo, fa'asa mo is, you'll, you hear it quite a bit. It, it means Samoan language, Samoan culture, Samoan customs. It, it really effectively translates to the Samoan way. Um, wo, wo is a verb for to arrive. Oi is a pronoun. Um, it means you that's the, in the singular. Oan mai oi is a, it's a standard way of saying, hey, how are you? Um, mala malama, it means light or, or understanding or to understand. Uh, tangata means person or people. Oai loingoa is what's your name? Um, ai means but. Ai means to eat. Ao is cloud or must. Awa is don't. Lo is a possessive pronoun, so we'll talk more about those in you know future videos. Fua mo is egg, literally translates to chicken fruit. The only reason I put that up there is because we're going to see fua quite a bit because um, it's a common prefix in certain words. Wo is friend. Yoi is yes. Leai is no. So I'll say that one more time. Leai. Tautala is to speak. Rapiti, uh, for whatever it's worth, that's rabbit. Nangana is language. Malo is uh, a sort of a less formal hi, or it kind of more effectively translates to congratulations. Um, so we'll go over more of those later. Um, and then ofetialoi is a way of asking a question of where are you going. So again, hopefully this was helpful. If you guys do like it, please uh, click that thumbs up button or subscribe or leave a comment. Um, some way to kind of indicate that, hey, this is something that people find useful. And if it is, then I'm happy to make more. Uh, again, thanks for your time. Uh, hope it was useful. Let me know. Thanks. Bye.